Perfect. Alright. Your audio is hot, my friend. Good luck. Oh, Have baby. fun. Thanks, Seth. You too. Alright, people. I was here earlier. I did Ridge Racer 4. This is not Ridge Racer 4. I'm still using the same controller. Okay, analog's all good. Alright, so this is Grand Mode 2, 80% no license prizes. And... 3, 2, 1, go. Alright, so this category is specific to the Japanese version of Gran Turismo 2 because there's a little oversight that Polyphony made to the Japanese version and that's it. No PAL or NTSCU can do this. Uh, to get into the World Championship, normally I have to qualify for the leagues and to do that to qualify the Nationals. So there's like uh, 22 races before World Championship. Now I can just beat the game. I don't have to have any prerequisites other than the licenses to get into the final race. Or final races. And, uh, this is no license prizes because the license prizes is very not marathon safe. It's, uh, very difficult. So what I'm gonna do here is just get some licenses and get a car and we'll be on our way. So these first three tests are start and stop tests. Let's go. Get to the finish line, stop. I'm gonna drift into it because it's faster. So, weird thing about Gran Turismo runs, it's not really weird, but it's the thing that's always constant for any Gran Turismo game, any Gran Turismo run. Uh, everything starts with the licenses. No run can start without getting these first five licenses. A, or B, A, I, C, I, B, and I, A. There's ten, a piece, ten tests apiece for the five licenses, so 50 tests throughout the run. Around a half an hour. They're not too bad. I could fail a couple. Cause some of them are difficult. I'm gonna try not to. Every time I fail, it's a, like... 15 seconds to like 30 seconds time loss. And my estimate's uh, pretty close to my record, so. I should be careful. But not too careful, it's not really that important. So, again, I'm using the G Con because it's a steering wheel pretty much, so the inside is uh, analog, like pure analog, more. Like different than DualShock analogs, like a st actual steering wheel. Uh, gotta break and shift. Oh, I almost drove right out of it. Uh, so the controller is pretty much split in half, where each side can move uh, independently from the other. So that pretty much simulates a steering wheel, as you can see. Well, here, uh, the motion of my wrists kind of mimic a steering wheel. It's very, very comfortable. So this Digicon was released in 1994, uh, September I believe. It was built for the Cyber Sled. Like, uh, I'll explain. It's like a robot battle arena shooting game made by Namco. This controller is also made by Namco. Namco Nijikon. Niji for Najiru. Twist and Con controller. Wordplay. Pretty good. So, originally built for Cyber Sled, it turns out to be very, very comfortable for racing games. And it's not a controller you can just plug and play for any racing game. There's a certain list of games that it's compatible for, because it's so specific. It's missing second set of shoulder buttons, only has L and R, L is analog. Uh, it doesn't have a sucked button, and uh, it doesn't have any analog sticks, it just has the center analog. Which games, like Gran Turismo, Wipeout, Toka, Tracer, I'll have this in mind. This intention of this kind of support in mind. Even Ace Combat works for it's pretty cool. Just a twist around. It's very comfortable. You wouldn't think it'd be comfortable by looking at it because you have to move your uh, wrists than your hands. As shown by my left thumb isn't on any button. I'm racing. It's very comfortable. A lot of natural hand motion and work. 
So now we explain these lights. There's nothing more to explain up until, like, I see. These are very simple. These are just introductory tests. The start and stop, circle, and these simple left-hand turns. And sometimes you'll notice that this little yellow marker in the track kind of help you guide you along the best driving line. I won't take it all the time, but I'll try to stick to it. And it's not something you can, like, you can turn off, like in Gran Turismo 4, I believe. You can like press L3 or R3 or something, and it can give you a little guideline. This is actually just stuck to the track. And most of these licenses are not actual courses, these are just like little license sections, like dedicated license sections. So we'll get to the real courses, like practical applied uh, license tests later. But this was the only game in the series that had dedicated license sections. Closest was 3. Extra 3 had a complex string, which is a giant racetrack with pretty much sections of quote unquote license things. Like there's slaloms, there's elevation changes, there's sharp lefts and rights, and like hairpins that like help you out and stuff like that. That's where those license tests are held. These are just, they put you somewhere it's not uh, gonna be in the game anywhere else. I never really understood, because if you're never going to see it, it's not really a skill that you would need to practice. Also, you're probably noticing that the soundtrack is different if you've ever played either European or American Gretchen Mode 2. They're all different. All three versions have way too many different pieces. They're like pretty much different games to a point. Yeah, other than the Japanese version, I don't have to do much, many races to beat the game. It cuts an hour 20 off of the run. But, like, manufacturers like Bohal is only in the PAL version. Uh, Japanese version doesn't have any Acura vehicles. Because Acura is an American American localization of Honda, that's where Integras and NSXs are stored pretty much. To cars even being changed from the Japanese version to the PAL version. For example, the Castle Car LM Edition is not supposed to be an MR vehicle, a mid-range rear-wheel drive vehicle. But in the PAL version, it's fixed to be the proper front-wheel, rear-wheel drive, or front-engine rear-wheel drive. Stuff like that. Some more start and stop tests, it's a little quicker this time. Yeah, and license times were also different as well. A lot of stuff was just fixed for the PAL version because PAL came out much later than everything else. The Grand Turismo 2 Japanese version was rushed for release in uh, December of 1999. It was only in production for two years and it's notoriously not finished. As in, if you have any uh, 1.0 versions of Gran Turismo, it's pretty much Japanese and American. You can't. Oh, nice gold. You can't get 100%, quote unquote. It's a 98.2 because there's four races missing. Because 1.8 divided by 4 is 0.49. That's how. Yeah, it's 0.49. I had to make sure. That's 0.49 percentage per race for the 235 races in the game. Those are supposed to be drag races. And those made it to the cutting room floor somehow, and the only remnant left is there's a little tiny section of the palm strip, or plam strip if you've ever seen in the early cutscenes. In Laguna Seca, if you could break out of Laguna Seca, you drive up to it, but you can't get on it, it disappears when you move on to it. That's just happened to be where it's stored. Alright, so these are more just the same tests. A little faster. I meant to shift to a second. I'm not using manual because uh, it's a little awkward with this controller. And more preference than anything. So 
So now we're just learning rear wheel drives and front wheel drive vehicles. Or introductory tests. Just getting the hang of the game pretty much. A lot of these I do gold, but for B and A specifically, they don't matter in any run because the cars won from gold licenses or for B it's the Spoon S2000 and for A it's the uh, Dodge Castle car or Dodge Copperhead, depending on how you know it. And they don't sell for much in that very fast, they're pretty useless. Alright, there's a couple understeer tests. In the hang of some big vehicles, like the 3000 GT. The D-pad for- D-pad is normally for just menuing and, uh... Shifting. Like, normally I'd put the, uh... Shifter for up and down, like, shift up and shift down. That's what I do for Ridge Racer. Pretty comfortable, since my left hand can pretty much roam free. And these are the lock to use. Because the L is analog, R isn't. So normally, if, if these were both analog, I'd accelerate and brake. Which would be a cool concept, but... Hey, this controller is, uh... Well, this model here is 19 years old, and the Nejikon itself is, uh, 23. It'd be cool to see a reboot of this in some form, like maybe with a uh, like Dreamcast or 360 style triggers here. Make it a little more comfortable. I was missing the buttons because there's just no room inside the controller. Because these are uh, these are bolts on levers that go like uh, up and down like this, and the inside are right here. So there's not a lot of room for any other buttons, as shown by no select button and no start button on the right side. Right, so here's a couple of awkward tests here. Same understeering, but I have to go around big curbs and try not to fail in the grass. Just learning how to like shift weights of uh, big vehicles. I feel like these never go well. <laughs> They're always just really awkward. Really, really difficult to, uh. Really difficult to gold. But I never grind them out because A is useless, like I mentioned earlier. Alright, on to IC, where we're actually going to see some practical applied testing. So we can learn how the tracks work. In my opinion, this is probably the toughest gold, the entire gold uh, test, or entire test to gold, I should say. It's a lot of super short tests, no room for error kind of stuff. And it has probably the most difficult gold in the game. Coming up soon. So these two are J turns with a small rear wheel drive and a big rear wheel drive. Well, not big, but medium size. And fun fact, the Miata and the Sylvia I'm using here, the d rights cars, uh, they are not in the game, like available for purchase or winning. They're just in the code as random license test vehicles. Alright, next two coming up. Probably the two, for most people, the two worst, worst tests. I'm gonna try to gold them both, because why not? It's the Camaro in the uh, sharp lefts. This one's the open one. I think I already messed with gold. Yeah, I think I did. Okay. Let's just take those corners without going into the grass a little bit and try to go like 105 around them. Oh, still got it. Cool. That one's not that difficult, because it's open, but the blind one is. This one's the notorious guardrails everywhere, no room to work. With the same uh, gold requirement, because this is the same test. It's 
really, really awkward kind of thing. Nah, I didn't do it. In my, uh... In past runs, there's just no resets. of I actually golded this a lot, this first try, but not today. And then, again, it's one of those license tests that doesn't appear later on the game, because it's not a track. Right, so here's the shortest test in the game. Supra in Red Rock Valley. I try to not. I was trying to not deaccelerate, but I still golded it. So as you can tell, very little room for error in these tests because it's 20 seconds, less than 20 seconds, etc. This one just extended of the Red Rock Valley test from earlier. I go a bit further, and it's a lot easier to gold. Yeah, Dragoon Claw also runs Gran Turismo too. So, if there's any questions that uh, either may have been answered before, you can uh, ask him with no delay. So there's a practical cornering with midfield. Pretty difficult to gold these two. Trying to get around the hairpin and keeper speed is pretty difficult. Because the Celica and this S2000 have a little bit of oversteer, so it makes it pretty difficult. No matter how hard lights test might be, they're always good to uh, grind out. You're always just gonna get better. Oh, that doesn't be gold. Miss it by 45 hundredths of a second. Now here's the one license test I'm gonna do a wall ride for. If I can do it correctly. It's a little faster. I could fail this. No, I didn't fail it. If I hit the wall hard enough, I could fail. Ah, still didn't gold it. That's the easiest way to gold that test. I've gotten like 19.6s there. But the Alpha Romeo is pretty bulky, so it's kind of hard to get to the guardrail. Guys, this is my favorite test. Corvette in Seattle, in the city section. Corvette may be a little big and tons of oversteer, but very fun to go through the city. I think that's a gold. Yeehaw, gold. And we're out. On to IB. Yeah, you want a lot of cars for all golds. That's a different category. Uh, I see you can get the Del Sol LM, which is actually pretty good. I haven't gotten in years. Uh, IB, which I'm going to do now. I can get the 3000 GT LM edition and for my the FTO LM edition which are useful for the run so I wouldn't have to do a race I'll do later all right so dirt test uh, Japanese version dirt test or just dirt in general it acts much different than the American and PAL versions it feels like I'm driving on ice all the time and you'll see on this corner here I'm gonna try to not drift into but it's yeah, even stuff like that. I barely even give it an input and the re kind of swung out. So it makes all these dirt tests very difficult. So if you ever wondered why the dirt tests have such uh, high golds, so I got that one by like three thousandths. Uh, it, this is why it was originally for Japanese tests. Like this one here, I'm probably not going to gold. And on the American version, I can get like a 17.7, 17.8. On average, like there's some grip on dirt. Like if you really think about it, like real life dirt, you can get some grip with your tires. This is lack like thereof. Very frustrating. 
All right, so we're back to the S's. We're gonna do a couple of oversteer cars for CFTO. Cause somehow uh, an FTO has oversteer. Not too bad. Just barely golded it. So IB is a little easier to gold everything than IC, but still pretty difficult. It's really, really difficult to get consistent. I think the best I've ever done is uh, one silver, and the silver was by less than a frame, so like I was slower on one frame. Or I did that one very poorly. That was not the way to do that. So I've, only, I've gotten really close, but not quite. And for a category like uh, license prizes, failing any test is 30 seconds down the drain and it's really not fun. Alright, so we got the Mustang in a downhill drift section. Kind of swing it into this corner and accelerate out. Hopefully that's a gold. Again, another section that doesn't come up in the actual game, so kind of a bunch of nothing. All right, so first slalom, everyone's favorite. They would gotta do this with a Peugeot 106. Very slow and it's also very tight. So it's gonna decelerate and turn each way. And I should get an 18. There it is. Alright, here's another awkward test. It's like a really difficult section that you just never see it again. Love you too, Vasher. You the man. What's up, Woo? Ah, I didn't gold it. I was hoping to gold it and make myself like sound dumb that I don't know how to do it, even though I do. But that's actually a really difficult test. Alright, here's everyone's favorite if you ever played this game before. Tried to gold all of the tests. Fast slalom. Yeah, I just failed it. Cool. It's very touchy to get a good uh, time here. Gotta go really fast. Not bad. I was going a little shaky on the uh, inputs there because there's enough room on the controller to do that. And it helps a lot because the tires aren't going to move that much. It's only, it's only like doing like that kind of thing. So, not bad. Fun fact, I guess probably still uh, world record with this, because I end up finding 40 seconds, give or take, uh, a couple nights ago, when I was uh, preparing for this. Because this is actually a last minute run, uh, someone had to duck out of the run, because their plans fell through. So, like, if I was doing this category, I wouldn't put the estimates so close to my record, which is a 109... 13 or something. I got it last night. So it's a. I got. I should play pretty well to get the estimate. All right. So here's the Guna Seca. Our first look at the first of two real life courses in the Gran Turismo series, and we're in the world famous Corkscrew with the famously bad Viper. Gresham 1, the Viper is amazing. Gresham 2, the Viper is terrible. So trying to handle extreme elevation changes and trying not to fly. It can actually fly away. With a car as bulky as a Viper is pretty difficult. Alright, on to IA. This is where real tests come in.
Let's start with the circle test. Very simple. This is actually probably for me the easiest license to get all gold in. And it's the one I mainly go for when I do any kind of license price category, whether it's low percent, which is a uh, power of uh, NTSCU, or 8% like Japanese version. As for this test, I'm gonna try to like not drift and stay in third so my tires don't spin as much. I'm not going on the outside. This one's practically free, so. There we go. Our next up super fast corners with the Griffith. So these are uh, more extreme elevation changes on a little section that you never see again. We'll take the curb, swing the rear end into the other curb, and break into this next corner. Not bad. Alright. Next test is probably my least favorite uh, ever. I I've, I've grinded IA3 for as long as I've been speedrunning this game, so almost two years. Because on the uh, NTSC versions, American and Japanese, this test is a uh, Two tenths of a second faster. We have to be two tenths of a second faster, I should say. So there's no room for error. <laughs> yeah, I think I already messed it up. I'm supposed to keep accelerating through the middle of the S section. Yeah, see, pretty difficult. I didn't make that many errors, honestly. But that's how little room there is on pallets. That would have been a gold, easily. All right, so. Three dirt tests, and like I mentioned earlier, dirt sucks. So normally this test is as free as can be on a PAL and NTSCU, and uh, this one I have to actually hope nothing goes wrong to gold it, and that's if I'm even fast enough to get the this last corner. I average around a, a 22.9 to 23.1 on an American version. That just shows. Alright, Escudo. Oh, I get to see the Escudo the one time in the run. And somehow the Escudo uh, remains unscathed throughout. Like, getting stuck in the wall there. Uh, unscathed throughout the random dirtness. So it plays like it normally should. So this test is pretty simple, even though I messed up the first corner. And I just spun out here. Not bad, not bad. I just made myself look like a, a right idiot. That's fine. Like, honestly, it's anything to not fail a test. I have to restart it. Okay. So here, the 306 in the exact same thing, but downhill. This was actually difficult because this is a front wheel drive rally car. But with the no traction of dirt, this thing has oversteer like it shouldn't. So it makes getting a good time here even more difficult. So I'm about to get lucky for a gold. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Got it by nothing. Alright. Now we got a bigger Alfa Romeo from earlier. So it's the same Rome circuit test. But now I'm in the touring car. I'm not going to do it the same way or I'll fail. But I'll do it a different way. For a wall ride. I'll bounce up the guardrail. Just straighten out the car. Get a little speed. And try to gold it. That setup is kind of difficult, but it works when it wants to. Alright, here's probably my favorite IA test because it never goes wrong. Uh, actually, 220 in midfield. So it's banked 
corner with elevation differences and the ending hairpin like in the earlier IC tests. Last two coming up. Uh, we're back to the course crew, but with a big race car, the Nissan R390 GT1. Try to, try to go straight down this as I can. Not to go on the curbs too much or I'll fly away. And deaccelerate into this and back out. And still didn't gold it. There's not a lot of room there either. Very difficult. And one last time in super fast corners with the GT1. We'll do it the same way. I'll attempt to do it the same way. Yeah, so failure in Richard Mode games is a little more than half of your vehicle in the grass. Or dirt, or what have you. Anything that's not the road. Yeah, I didn't do that right. I was supposed to accelerate and try to rev the tires third gear, so. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, so failure is more than half your car, depending on uh, what side. Or any collision that's uh, fast, so. The collision is the reason why I have to be a little careful with the off Romeo tests. Alright, so those licenses went poorly. Not bad. So I'm gonna grab the one car I need. Be a Toyota Twin Turbo R. Nope, that's not it. One input off. Alright. So somehow this big bulky Supra happens to be the best car for the job. I'm gonna do one special event. So I can get a car that can win worlds like I mentioned earlier. I can just go right into the world championship. I'm gonna do 80 sports car 5 in Tahiti Road. It's three laps and I'm playing against a bunch of cars in the 80s and some of the 90s. Like the Supra I'm in is a 1991 Supra and it is in this race every once in a while. Same with the uh, Celica GT4 91. So this race is the easiest to get a car, and the car I get is also the fastest car of the cars that are relatively easy to get. Like the other ones I can do, actually the only other one is uh, Grand Touring Trophy 1, and that's, that nuts me the Daishin Silvia GC, which is like 150 horsepower slower than the car I'm gonna get. And that's in Red Rock Valley, it's also three laps. If it wasn't three laps, I think it'd be better to get. But any kind of race cars is a three lap race. I just noticed my uh, map disappeared. I've actually never seen that before. Dragoon, have you ever seen that before where the, the race map disappears? <laughs> this is new. And I, just, I look to the left and I'm like, oh, there's nothing there. <laughs> That's not good. This is a little quirk in the uh, reverse Tahiti Road. Uh, there's. It's the reverse Tahiti Road and the reverse Tahiti Road Dirt Route 3. Normally, on the race map, you'll see it later. Unless they all disappeared, it'd be weird. Uh, there's a black border around the race map, and those two tracks don't have it. So it kind of looks awkward, looks really bad. Yeah, so I can't even tell where my opponents are, and I don't even want to look behind. I'm not going to lose or anything, but I always like to just look around. So I'm racing on Tahiti Road, and this track uh, never came back in the series. Rishimo 2 is notorious for having 
a uh, handful of tracks that never see the light of day again. Now it's Eugene Road, uh, Pikes Peak, Uphill Downhill, uh, Red Rock Valley, Grindelwald, Rome Short, Seattle Short. And I think that's it. I'm not right off the top of my head if there's any more. Those tracks never came back. And surprisingly enough, uh, the site Grand Trismo Planet or GTPlanet.net did a poll for uh, what would you like to see in like DLC for Grand Trismo 5 or 6. And those tracks were on the poll, but they did not get a. Uh, did not win the poll. I think Infineon. Raceway won the pole, that was in Gresham's Mo 04, and I think it never came back. That's the American Speedway in... I believe Florida? So people do want these courses back, but not enough. So it seems like the group of nostalgic Gresham's Mo 2 players are smaller than the people who actually appreciate the real-life courses, which I'm fine with. California in the fan, okay. I'm thinking of something else. I like Infinia. I like it a lot. So I'm definitely not surprised at that. Like even Special Stage Round 11, which is in Grand Trismo 1 and 3. Yeah, those people apparently didn't want it back that bad. Alright, so we're gonna say bye to this Supra. Because it can't win the World Championship. Yeah, this is where originally I uh, drove on Infineon, NASCAR 2000 or PlayStation 1. Very fun game. Alright, so from this race, I win the card that I'm going to be using for the rest of the game. The Nissan Skyline R30 Silhouette Formula race car. Looks like a shovel. Big ol' front wing. Don't need those, don't need those. Let's just beat the game. Yahoo. The World Cup is... Oh, I'll explain after I set up this car real quick. Super tough tires, max spring rate, lowest ride height, fr uh, straight camber, max down force, and we're gone. Okay, so five laps, five laps apiece for five races, and it's the most difficult group of opponents, or hopefully most difficult group. There's a lot of German touring cars that end up in here, they're not very fast. Alright. All I gotta do is just win. Alright, so I do that suspension setup. Because it's actually a lot faster than uh, stock. With the menuing as well. I'll see how you can tell I'm getting off the camera with the uh, turning. I do turn quite heavy with this the G-Con, so. Oh, actual motion. So, the suspension's like that. I don't have an actual setup for it. I was gonna make one like months ago when I figured out that tweaking the suspension and the downforce actually makes the car a lot better. Because I've been playing this Crash of the Most Series since 1998 and I've always been like scared of doing suspension tuning. Like, scared is like not only the best word for it, but I was intimidated by all the suspension stuff. And it's only been recently that I've looked into it. So I just picked what's work, like what works. The stuff that I kind of tell helps, like the max spring rate, max spring rate, and the ride height together. With the ride height lowest and the spring rate at max, keeps the car from moving and it's very close to the ground. That mixed with the high downforce creates a pretty good suction effect between the track and the car. But I do lose out on a. Uh, I think it's acceleration. It's either acceleration or top speed. I forgot which. But that helps a lot with just turning and steering and getting around corners. Just maneuverability in general. And the camber, I kind of just guessed and it worked. The camber is, uh... What's the best way to describe this? The opposite of toe-in. Like, toe-in for like a tire, if you look at it like this. The toe is this, and the camber is that. So, the horizontal and vertical degrees. 
of change and they affect the tires very very much but the camber affects how much of a tire is on the track the toe is in the same way but it's in straight line the camber is in the turning so really the camber could just be wrong but I've seen the uh, straight setup work pretty well for me I didn't do anything with the damper or stabilizers because this car doesn't really need it And then downforce is downforce, downforce is pretty great. And the super soft tires, because you get all the tires for free for any race car. And super soft's the best. Most grip, there's no tire wear. Also, I just noticed there's no map. That's weird. Where's my where's my race map? <laughs> this is new. I'm scared, help. Yeah, from here on out, there's really nothing much to explain about the run because it's just me racing. So if there's any questions, I have the chat open, so I'll answer them. No, I should probably say, I also have the record for this, and if I didn't fail the GT1 test, I probably would have gotten record. The record is 109. They're I'm still gonna guess that last two digits, but yeah, this run could be a, a 108. I just grind it out enough. I really wish this car would not go in the air. Be fantastic. this is a really risky suspension setup so any kind of awkward shift to the weight of the car I kind of just spin out I do the wall right there because it's much faster than taking the corner as intended so I actually keep most of my speed into the wall ride. There's grass between the wall and the track that my car runs over, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Progressively as the games went on, uh, grass became less and less thick, I guess. The best way to describe it. Like, I could take that uh, corner cut trial mountain here, the last corner right at the end. I mean, it's just thick enough where it's like not worth it, so my tires still get kind of caught in it. Aggression mode 1, it's not worth it at all. 3, it's alright, and 4, the grass just doesn't do much. More flat. It's one of many quirks of the Grand Chidmo games. Second gen CRX. Not sure. A lot of the cars that are around this time that this didn't make into the game were all licensing issues. Much like the Volkswagen Polo. That's in the code. Doesn't have a name. You can see it in the event generators. It's there, but uh, not really there. Because you can see the Polo uh, name in the intro sequence. And it just doesn't exist. And the Mercedes CLK Touring Car, that was also a licensing issue. It's in the code, but you can't uh, find it anywhere. It's not like in a race or anything. When I first saw the Polo, it really caught me off guard because like... Uh, I saw like a red boxy car on the replay when I was doing an event generator. And when I saw the lineup, there was no name on like second place. I'm like, what is that? Oh, it's the Polo, not bad. It's weird that car I've seen maybe twice in my life I can instantly recognize. It's something you always hear about but never see. But 
But this run was, this game was rushed, so a lot of stuff that Polyphony wanted in didn't get in. Uh, I think the cutting room, I don't know what the cutting room floor site is. But it's worth a check out for uh, Gretchen's Mode 2 alone. For just how much didn't make it in the game. There's so much missing, there's so much wrong with it. Gretchen Mode 2 had three revi uh, two revisions past the initial release. On the uh, American version, it was 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. .1, tons of licensing issues and tons of errors. <clears throat> yeah, the track map's still gone. I don't understand. Like, I've actually never seen this before. I throw it off. It doesn't feel like I'm playing the correct game. It's supposed to be in the bottom left, and now it's just not there. I'm glad my game didn't, like, crash or something. I, I don't even know how that would happen because I never crashed Gran Turismo before. This is just weird. Or Demio's. Yeah, we need the uh, Demio A spec again. We need, the, we need to hear the UFO. A nice 40. Not bad. That's all the boogeyman is. 40. Horse map disabled. You can do that? You can disable the course map? Oh, that might have been it. Yeah, I, must, I was like messing with the menus. Uh, getting on my, I warm up my hand and whatnot. Huh. All right. That's interesting. Uh, I don't want to turn it off ever again. <laughs> I'm getting like really thrown off. That's not there. Didn't want to do that. I prefer to stay on the ground. This thing has wings, but don't want to use them. Yeah, apologies for the dead air. This uh, this run's not too in depth. I like that sunshine run from earlier. Ooh, okay. Didn't want to do that. Really need to be more careful. But hey, it's, it's nice to have a, a chill run in the marathon and you can just sit and watch. I know my chat tells me that all the time. Gretchen's was a very uh, AFK oriented stream.
lack of Dragula, you are you are not wrong, Vasher. You are not wrong. I miss hearing Dragula for five and a half hours straight. Well, here's the thing, Dragoon. It's uh, 5 30 in the morning. I ran out of stuff to talk about. Ho ho, got me. I was doing a uh, low percent, would be a lot more to talk about, but that's, that's a lot more in depth. <laughs> the Euro Trash album. The Euro Trash soundtrack is Grand Mode 2. In one ear, out the other. You think for me playing this game for like two years straight, that would happen? But nah. Alright, so we're on Apricot Hill. Uh, fun fact about Apricot Hill uh, Apricot Hill Forward. Uh, this is like every track, it could be in the. Either one makes or the event generators. Anything that's random. But the way the game takes tracks to load them, like the event generators or one makes, uh, takes them from a big old list. Kind of matches like two values. And one is like the word in your Apricot Hill. Apricot Hill Forward is actually spelled wrong in the code, so it never comes up in one make races or event generators. You can never see it. But Apricot Hill Reverse does show up. Thanks to AD Blue for that. AD Blue uh, did a lot for uh, the Grand Turismo community by looking into the code and whatnot. You get ripped all the uh, used car values, you found the garage glitch. And found an in-depth way to make it into a speedrun, though I still know how to do it. It's on, it's on any 1.0 version. You can do a bunch of max speed tests with different cars, and the way the game handles like eight or nine of them, it clears your garage. But if you do it in a way where you constantly beat the times, you can access like code. Almost like arbitrary code execution. You can underflow all your money, you can make a seat off doing licenses. I would I hope there's a point where uh, he can find like hybriding. Like a hybrid car for a run would be sweet. That run is short of this, but I've never pulled it off. I think his record's like a 103. That's very, very interesting. It's interesting in the point of, like on paper interesting, as opposed to in-game, because the first part of the run is very, very tedious, just buying cars, doing just a 100 meter dash, or 1000 meter dashes, you're doing races, and end up doing one license per license S, and clears them. Yeah, I still need to attempt it. I have his notes, but it's really hard to decipher his notes. Maybe one day, who knows? Remember he beat the game one time with a... I think it was an Escudo with a Miata body? That was the default body for the cars in the code or something like that, or the way he... Uh, Somehow executed the underflow of money and stuck the me out of body and he bought an escudo. I was like, oh, this is not an escudo. <laughs> Alright, so I take that little cut through there because it's obviously faster. And I can go faster just through grass, even with the slowdown, than taking it intended.
Yeah, this is a very easy to get into uh, category. The only thing is you gotta have a Japanese console for it. For people who haven't like learned uh, how to like drive with bad cars yet, that's pretty much the majority of low percent is uh, grinding out uh, races with a, a little Miata, trying to make it as fast as you can. Hey man, with this uh, suspension setup, it's very very easy. I think you got this. I want to see a 109 from your Dragoon. I'm telling you. I'm still being thrown off by my no course map. I can't really turn it off. It's awkward. Feels like something's wrong. One day, one day. I probably should talk about the downforce a little bit. Uh, low percent, the end of the game does not look like this end of the game. Because there's actually money in that run. The leagues, the six leagues, the Euro and Pacific League, six races, uh, all net me a prize car that's a, a race car. So they all sell for a quarter of a million credits. Uh, you can just sell all those and end up with GT1 road car, nice 98. The thing is, uh, it being a road car, you would think you can race and modify cars, so turn it into a race car, give it, you know, a wing and whatnot. So any car that doesn't have race modification can't have downforce adjusted. And that's one of the cars that desperately needs it, so low percent gets very, very difficult if you don't know how to handle a big giant. LMP like the GT1. It may be super super fast because it has 977 horsepower. And it doesn't weigh much, it weighs less than 2,000 pounds. But it's very 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 difficult to drive. And no matter how much suspension to an EU can do, not having the downforce adjustments makes it extremely difficult. There's a reason why I'm starting to like this category more because I get to relax and just play the car. It's pretty simple to drive. I don't have to actually worry about spitting out. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how it got so loose all of a sudden. I think my tires are spitting the whole time. We're in Rome. Rome Rome's really one of the mainstays of uh the Crash of the series up until five. Which it technically comes back, I think it's either five or six. There is a Rome circuit in one of those. I haven't played those in quite some time. I think you recognize it if you go in reverse of that Rome, you can see the Colosseum. And it's in the same spot as this one. I think a different layout of that room. I don't know if the the cannon matches up. This is a pretty great course. A lot of wall riding, so it's very simple for a speed run. And it's actually pretty easy to clip out of this. Not with this car, because the way to clip out of tracks is you gotta have something very powerful and try to fit between like a crack in the in the walls so between like a guardrail and just tires they saw earlier or right right here that can happen if there are two walls kind of there's like the tire wall with a barrier and then the other invisible barrier beneath that but you can clip out of these you have something very powerful like an escudo or I think a drag car might do it. Something all-wheel drive that can keep its traction. 
Rains up against a wall. Which is how the Laguna Seca clip works to look at the palm strip. I'm using a Namco Najikon, N-E-G-C-O-N. Naji for Najiru, which is Japanese for twist. Con for controller. Nice play on words. Thanks, Namco. The hardware inside uh, this Najikon is also found in controllers such as the Interact Ultra Racer, which I used to use for uh, Ridge Racer 4 runs, and Konosumi does the same. He has a record with it. I had a record before he took it. Uh, the Interact V3 steering wheel. Steering wheel, the Rackcon, which is like a remote control controller. Like, actually, like, one that has like a trigger and a dial on the side. Uh, anything that has the buttons 1 and 2, or it's like either pedals or its face, and A and B. Since this actual Sony PlayStation controller doesn't have A and B, it has X triangle square and circle. Uh, a, B right there, and 1, 2 right there. It has analog right on the inside, like a steering wheel should. So if you ever wanted to know, or anyone wanted to know, what, what's a good steering wheel for PlayStation 1, your best bet is the Interact V3 steering wheel or the Mad Cat's Dual 4 steering wheel. But since those two wheels have extra buttons that aren't on the Nijikon, it has a little bit less compatibility. Some games don't know how to handle the extra buttons, like a WRC World Rally Championship for PlayStation 2. It was like one of the five PlayStation 2 games with support of this, and it doesn't know how to handle it. it doesn't know how to do with the extra buttons, so the menus kind of go wonky. I believe Rallycross 2 also has an issue with it as well. But then again, you can't even do the track editor with this controller. D27, not bad. I have a Dragon Force Pro sitting around. But this is before USB steering wheels. I do love my Dragon Force Pro a lot. It's very, very good. I got it for like 10 bucks. Like five, not five years ago. I think it's like eight years ago at this point. Which it could be used for speed runs, but why would I ever want to run Gresham's about three or four? Too long. I'm gonna sit back and do this hour long category. Very calming. Ooh, nice drift that I didn't want. Not bad, not bad. On the way to the last race of the run. Alright. One to go. Five more laps. I race with automatic because I'm lazy. No, nah, I'm just, uh, I'm not comfortable with manual. If I was using a real, like an actual steering wheel with a shifter, I'd probably use manual, but with the G-Con, it's, it's like too much to keep track of, I already don't use my left thumb as it is. I know it's faster, but I'd rather not. Alright, so last race, midfield raceway. Let's see if I can go for uh, four sub one laps. Make this go pretty quick. So midfield is a little awkward for Gresham 2 because this game takes a lot of hardware on the PS2, or even PS1 I should say, because it's on PS1. It takes a lot of hardware on the PS1 to play. So every track in the game loads at two points, as a because the track deloads. I think I can 
Look behind and see it deload. Yeah, I can kind of see it deload in the back. So it tries to, doesn't try to get the uh, whole track at once, just does it in sections. So every, there's two points. Uh, this track is right here and at the start line. The game will lose its frame rate quite uh, quite a bit. Not as much as like the American version. Back in my old PS2, uh, it, it, it slowed down so much that you can see the uh, hundredths. Like, that's will actually move, it's very rare, so you can kind of see it here. It slows down a bit. Um, apparently I don't think it happens because I think it's a little optimized. But it takes so much power that tracks are really small, take quite a bit to load. Yeah, you kind of see it like load here. It's not even like a draw distance problem, it's just a, a loading problem. No, I don't even know how to drive IRL. Playing racing games for 20 years doesn't really help. Two different skills. It's kind of like trying to learn real guitar when you play Guitar Hero. Which uh, I have tried from experience. There's one. Three more 59s to go. Maybe I can get a 58. If I know how to drive, that'd 58 would be easy, but I apparently don't know how to drive. Nah, I'm not a fan of first person. I get that a lot, like, how do you play in third person kind of thing? How do you, how do you gold slalom test in third person? And that's just how I've played. I get really thrown off when I'm at the front bumper. And there's no inside view, so... Well... Yeah, not even a 59 rib. I think a lot of modern racing game uh, players play in first person, that's probably why. Like, I'm gonna sound like an old man here, back in my day when I was playing Top Gear 2, there wasn't the first person mode. I just felt like I was thrown off on the PlayStation 1 games when I was in first person. It just, it just feels really weird. Like, my depth perception is like way far off. I can even play in like the far view, which is this, for Grand Theft Auto 1. Because the Japanese version of Grand Mode 1, you're forced. Alright, so this is the last lap. The end of the run will be in 50 seconds. In a fair warning. Gotcha. Like, I'm using an actual steering wheel, I'm probably gonna. I probably do a first person, but it just. It feels weird. I, my eyesight is just. Awkward when that happens. That's what happens when you do something for so long. You never change. Didn't go wrong? Yeah, I failed two license tests. Ho ho. That just runs like very beatable. Alright, so time is. Time. 109.35. Hey, that's pretty bad, but hey, not bad. Woohoo. <laughs>
And go ahead and uh, segue us out, and uh, thanks for the run, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Alright, so that's the end of the run. Uh, sad thing about this game, you'll see in like 10 seconds. If anyone's ever beaten this game, they know. Right, there is no credits on this disc. If there's a view to credits, I'd have to save my game, which takes like a minute. <laughs> Take out my disc, get the arcade disc, and then go into the goodies and then load the credits. Alright, so I can win one of four cars here. I can get the Calsonic Skyline, Calsonic Beacon SX, GT1 race car, R390, GT1. I'm going to guess the Calsonic Skyline because I like it the most. Not bad. Alright, cool. Alright. So thanks for watching my run guys, thanks for Voltage for having me, for second time today, really appreciate it. This marathon has been great so far, I hope you all continue watching. Next up, we've got Fire of the Dragon, 120%. My stump, I love 120%, it's like my favorite Spyro category. I know a lot of people who run it, and it's going to be great, so stick around, and uh, I'll see myself out. Later y'all.